Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be glazing this plate and these two mugs. The plate is going to be by pouring brushing glazes, and then the mugs I'm using stroke and coat, which we will see in the next few clips. So the poured plate, these are the brush on glazes that I used, and you'll see just how I made it by pouring brushing glazes. Starting with Mako's Lavender Mist. Just gonna shake it up really good and then just randomly pour it onto the plate. So now that I have it poured, I'm just like pushing the glaze around, like trying to get it to like move around, which it was kind of thick, so it didn't like do what I wanted it to, but that's fine. So now I'm just taking my finger, like literally finger painting, um, but my pressure is very light going over the glaze because like I don't want to push too hard. I'm just kind of smoothing out the thick areas like gently and just kind of, you know, moving the banding wheel as I go before I pour the next layer, the next color. So this one is Pink Opal by Mako. Just trying to use it up because I don't particularly love this glaze. So I'm just, again, pouring randomly the same way I did with the lavender mist. Okay, so next color is Arctic Blue by uh, Amico. And this was more watery, so you'll see when I poured it, it was like a lot, it, like a lot came out because it was thin, but that's okay. So the same process with this Arctic Blue color. Next up is Moody Blue Stroke and Coat, and I'm just getting it on there randomly. Had a little problem with that bottle during this glazing session, but that's okay. So I'm just squirting it all over randomly. I really didn't know what to do with this plate, so I just decided to experiment and just pour glazes and see what happens. 
Um, so yeah, so I'm just smoothing out the moody blue and just kind of going gently again with the finger. That moody blue is thick. Any stroke and coat can be like rather thicker or maybe it's just my, my bottles, but anyway, just smooth it in there and then set it off to dry. And then the next full layer, we're gonna cover with sandstone. So now that I'm gonna set these aside and let them all dry, once they're dry, now we're gonna do sandstone over the whole thing. Sandstone by Mako. A good, you know, slop it on there. I did a good two coats over the entire thing, you know, on the exterior rim as well. And I didn't do the back of the plate like this because it wouldn't have worked well. It would have probably stuck to the shelf. And next up is pearl white. That's gonna be the last glaze. And I'm doing a good, uh, actually the glaze was really thin. So I did two coats of the pearl white. Pearl white for life, it's my favorite. I swear that <clears throat> that glaze makes everything better. Okay, after this, I'm just gonna let this dry, fire it, and then in the next clip, I'll show you how it came out. Once I move my kitty out of the way, we can see the plate. So here it is, all finished. Very artsy kind of look. I think it's really cool. I can't wait to try it on different clay bodies. This clay body was speckled buff by Laguna. So I think it would look really cool on like B-Mix or a white clay as well, or even a red clay. I think it would look cool. Anyway, now we're onto the mugs, which Moody Blue and Honey Flux. Those are the only two glazes that you'll need for these mugs. And you will see with the Moody Blue, I'm just squirting it on there randomly. And then I'm going to kind of smooth it in and like finger paint, basically. So I'm going to, you know, take the, my finger with that light touch and just kind of go in an upward motion um, towards the rim. And I'm just gently pushing it around randomly. There's no rhyme or reason. All going by feel and just kind of being creative. So that's the process with applying the stroke and coat. You can use any stroke and coat color, multiple colors. I just chose to keep it simple and do the moody blue because I'm obsessed with this moody blue color. For any beginners out there, a tip for you is to just apply the Moody Blue or the Stroke & Coat color, not really past like three quarters of the way down because it will run and you will see how far it ran in the finished clip that I'll show you soon.
some areas are thick and some areas are thinner and I like that contrast to get like you'll see in the finished piece it's it's contrasting when you have like a thick area and then a thinner application area okay so now we're going to apply the honey flux and we're going to do three coats all over but the third coat i keep it away from the bottom and i'll show you that as we go so the way i apply my honey flux because it can leave bald spots so I'm so gently pressing that brush against the piece so it really gets like an even thick coverage. Like I'm barely pressing down with the brush. It's, it's a very light brush stroke, especially for the first coat. This is coat number two of the Honey Flux. Um, the video did not record the last third coat of the honey flux on these mugs so I just did three coats total um, but I stopped the third coat a little bit above the bottom in case we get some running okay And here they are. Look how gorgeous these are. I'm gonna zoom in closer on the next clip so you can get a good look. Now, my kiln fired really hot, so maybe it ran more than it normally would. I think that got to like a seven and a half, eight. It's a long story, but anyway, um, see how the bottom, you'll notice, on a couple areas that there's a bald spot. Like the Honey Flux does that if you don't have like good applications of it. That's why I was trying to show you the soft brush stroke of that. But regardless, these mugs came out amazing. I love the Moody Blue. It has such a like deep, rich color. And I just love the way, yep, see the bald spot right there. But I just love the way that these Stroke & Co. colors just in Honey Flux, it's such an easy combo and they look amazing and I love it. What do you think? Let me know if you found this video helpful, if you like it, if you have questions. And that's all for now. I hope you have a great weekend, everyone. See you next time.